welcome back. So glad that you Thank found you. Your, yourself back here for the nonprofit show. I have a little bit of a Southern draw coming out if you're hearing that. Recently, oh. I was in Nashville, also made my way to South Carolina. So my, my roots are coming out. But again, thrilled to have you here at the nonprofit show. This is a very exciting week, Julia, because it, it is, is nonprofit power week. And each and every single day this week, we have a fantastic thought leader and rock star from our friends and our partners over at YPTC, your part-time controller. This is day four of the nonprofit power week. And the days are flying by each and every day, each and every conversation has truly been back magnificent. So thrilled to jump into today's conversation. We have Alicia Eastvold joining us. Alicia is, of course, with your part-time controller, and she's bringing to us a conversation all about nonprofit success as it relates to automation. So she's got lots of good nug nuggets to share with us today. Before we jump into conversation, though, Alicia, we want to remind all of our viewers and our listeners, if we have not met you yet, we are thrilled you're here. Julia Patrick is, of course, here, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, and we have her to thank for this platform. I get to play alongside each and every day. My name is Jarrett Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group, but really known as Nonprofit Nerd because I can nerd out over this stuff until you're blue in the face. I absolutely love it. But I have to tell you, the YPTC team is quite nerdy. And that is a huge compliment because each and every one of you truly just have this like excellence within you. But, you know, we are so grateful because we have now produced nearly 900 episodes, including these episodes here today for Nonprofit Power Week. Could not do this if it weren't for our amazing partners. So a shout out of gratitude to all of our friends. Thank you to Fundraising Academy at National University. Also to Bloomerang, of course, to your part-time controller, again, with this dedicated Nonprofit Power Week. Also, thank you to Nonprofit Thought Leader, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. These companies, day in and day out, pour into you and your mission. Of course, they're here for our episodes, but they're really here to help you elevate your mission, no matter where you are in our country. So please do check them out. And as I mentioned, we have a wealth of information to share with you, even yeah. in the green room. Alicia, you are so kind and generous to mention, you know, how much content is out there and it is free to all of you to consume at any time, no matter what time zone you're in. If you're watching, I, I go ahead and grab your phone, scan this QR code on the left of the screen, and you can download our app. You can still find us on broadcast and podcast platforms. So pretty much anywhere you like to consume your entertainment, we are also right along there. So please find us. But without further ado, you've waited so patiently, Alicia, even into this week, because you were on day four of Nonprofit <laughs> Power Week, and you've seen your colleagues you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday prior. But Alicia Eastvold, again, is joining us. She is an associate at your part-time controller. Welcome to you. It is so nice to be here. I love this group. I love this podcast. Um, you guys are doing great work. I'm honored to get to share today. So thanks for having me. You know, you said something really magical in the uh, green room chatter, and I'd love to revisit this because you talked about being on a team mm. that allows you a lot of flexibility. And, and it seems to me that's led you to be a flexible thinker. Can you mm. talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, I think what I love about where I work is that I work with people who are very collaborative. We share what we know and we're generous with what we know. Um, and that's a real culture that YPTC has worked to develop. And as a result, we just become better experts at what we know. So whatever I share today, it's a lot of what I've learned both on the job, but a lot of it is just from people who were kind enough to say, hey, here's something I've learned from my experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm really grateful for that because I think it makes me a better professional in a lot of what I do. And it's really unique, I think, to, to where what YPTC has created as a culture. So. Well, in that culture, as you mentioned, I know we mentioned it earlier this week, 
30 years of business, which is a wonderful feat. I mean, really magical in and of itself. So 30 years for the business, but if you add up all of the team members, right? Like centuries, it's just so yeah. much information. So yeah. thrilled to have you with us, Alicia, to talk about automation. And as we kick this off right out of the gate, we're going straight to AI, artificial intelligence <laughs> and automation and yes. how that might be a win-win. Share with us what you're seeing when it comes to AI and automation for success. Sure. Well, I mean, I think there's the easy answer, which you mm -hmm. probably already know, which is that we know that this can save time and it can save costs. And that's important when you're managing a nonprofit with limited resources. But I'm going to guess from your experience, that's not been enough to make that jump into automation or AI. Would, would I be assessing pretty accurately from what you hear? Yeah. So I, I'm using I think, it quite, quite a bit. I say it's my best uh, assistant mm -hmm. right now, but it is yeah. simply that it's an assistant. Yeah. right? And I know there's so much more to AI and I have, I'm barely scratching the surface. Yeah. And I mean, I, and today I'd love to talk about not just AI, but also automation because both have some different options for what you can use it to do mm -hmm. and maybe even clarifying what the difference between those are. But the truth is like, if you were trying to automate a task um, a few years ago, it may not have been as easy or as affordable as it is yeah. now. And that's something that's changed. Like we're seeing things even changing in the last 12, 24 months of yeah. integrations and things. They're more affordable. Um, yeah. They're a little bit easier to learn and use. I say a little bit, because sometimes depending on what you're trying to do, and they play nicely with other tools. So that's another feature that we didn't have before. And you can see it like if, if you're an accountant and you're using QuickBooks online, you can go in their app store and you can yeah. tie to Bloomerang, which I see in your background, Jared, or to our payroll providers, and it can sync up your data and tasks that you used to spend days doing, sometimes you can now do in an hour or a half a day with automation, um, but there's also AI. That's another thing that might be a little different than automation too. I think the automation is so great. I've seen win-wins yeah. across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, I play a lot in the development space. And so how does our donor database like Bloomerang connect with a QuickBooks Online or a mm -hmm. Sage accounting system? You know, the accounting system so that the finance and the fundraising departments, which we've had your colleague, Deanna Peterson, join us to wow. talk about, you know, how do we remove these silos and how do we bring in efficiencies and, you know, effective best practices to create these, I'm going to say bridges, you know, yeah. but it really is a lot of times that automation piece. Yeah. And um, I think one of the things that's worth considering when we talk about automation, so we talk a lot about time and cost. Those are very measurable. But another thing is just the mental load that you no longer have to carry. Like right. we underestimate the, the amount of stress it takes to make sure something's accurate, to yes. prepare for it, to recover from it. And, and, and we all know those tasks. It's the ones that are the most painful to do. And we tell ourselves there's got to be a better way. Yeah. Um, those are the tasks that it, it's great to automate. And once you do it, when you lighten that load, you get to now use the information better. Like you're saying, Jarrett, like you can use it to make decisions, mm -hmm. um, and actually help inform your business rather than we spend more time just trying to get the task and we don't have any time left. We don't have any brain capacity left. So. Yeah, I think we, we, a lot of times we do these tasks. We don't really understand why yeah. we, we do them to, uh, accomplish the task and then we don't have enough time or understanding to review the work that yes. we've done to really yeah. understand the implications and move it through out you know move it through the organization mm -hmm. there's so much fear involved with this yeah um, and and you know the digital nature especially as Jarrett mentioned you know fundraising people um you know making donations taking that leap of faith that their financial information is going to be held safe and secure by this mm -hmm. nonprofit. If you could address this a little bit more for us is as we navigate into this digital space with, with more um, intention on, from our nonprofit side, is this wise? Is it safe? Is it secure? Um, I mean, the truth is 
the technology is changing so fast. Mm -hmm. We're going through a really big shift. And like the best example I could think of is that the shift of when the combustible engine came online and the Model T Ford was now propelling people. And then pretty soon after, we've got a lot faster cars and the horses and the buggies that we were using before, they worked and they, they stuck around for a while. But at some point, you have to start making a shift because this is where the world's going. And when you look at things like AI and what it's doing, it it is like a hyperspeed compared to the way that we are thinking now we have more computing power we have more data yeah. and we have more algorithms to bring all this together mm -hmm. i mean think of like i was just giving that example of automation of how i could maybe have it do my record keeping in my accounting software ai takes it up a next notch and says analyze all that data right. look for trends Give me five recommendations for how I can how I can use that information. And at YPTC, we're working on building our own AI for that purpose because we know it's going to help us do our job more effectively. Mm -hmm. And th there's more and more tools like this coming out all the time. I mean, even ones that will go and generate the email to your donors in, right. in the tone of you. you. Right. Um, it, it's just amazing. So when you go back to the safety I think it's like trying to compare saying, is, is riding a horse more safe than driving in a car? <laughs> and the answer is depends. It really depends. Like I, I, I like to think of when I was a child of the seventies and eighties, my mom had me in like those unlatched car seats in the front, front row. I mean, yeah. I, I could have flown out the windshield. <laughs> Yeah. We so, were lucky if we had a lap belt, right? Like that was exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, we're, we're driving fast. Yeah. And so you got to slow. There is such a need. If you want to, we want to go that speed, you better first slow down and think about the safety sides of it, because there are some real vulnerabilities that you can protect yourself from. Yeah. And there's some best practices in how you do it. Well, Alicia, I feel like that takes us to, you know, really where you are going to dive deep is, you know, how do we find and choose the right tools for us? And you were yeah. sharing with us before we even open the digital mm -hmm. doors today, there, there needs to be, you know, some due diligence in this space. Absolutely. So talk to us about what do we need to do when it comes to choosing the right tools? Yeah, that's a uh... And first, let's just talk safety. And then I can talk about just design and thinking. But yes. when you get to the point when you're looking at a tool, you need to vet it. You need to make sure that it's a reputable organization. I mean, we've already seen like just because it's in an app store doesn't mean it's going to securely care for your data. And just because it's got five stars, you don't know who's giving those five stars. So checking checking with other people in the industry, experts in the industry who are using these tools. That's that's why I love to collaborate with my colleagues and talk about what they're using and what's working well. It really gives me a, a, a good track towards what I want to use. And then they should be having security certifications like the SOC 2 mm -hmm. and others to make sure that they are protecting your data. And if you're not sure, you might want to get somebody to come in and do like a cybersecurity evaluation and they can look at your organization and help you think through if you are thinking about those things carefully, they can help you through that. But when it's time, I mean, that, so that's the security side, but I've got a few more things to say about um, like picking a tool. So I don't know if you want to, if you had no. any. Yeah, bring it on. It. We're ready yeah. for it. Yeah. We want to hear. So biggest thing, spend the time up front. You're going to spend it either way. Um, this was a great thought from my colleague, Edwin Harvey. Um, who's done so many tech implementations, which is you're going to spend this time either up front or at the end. Right. Um, if you choose to pick quick, you're going to spend a lot of time learning the tool as you go. And you may get to the end and have that same circumstance you talked about where you get to the end and go, oh man, this doesn't do what I want it to do. This is so hard. It doesn't work. And that has to do with the questions that you probably didn't ask in the beginning. So we always ask when somebody comes to us um, for like a tech advice or tech implementation, we say, what do you need the tool to do? Mm -hmm. And then right on the heels of that, we say, do you even need to be doing this task? <laughs> because there's so many times we see people are automated. They, oh, I got to automate it. But like, okay, but is this even a task we need? 
And because sometimes the best automation task, as Bill Schwab said, is to just not do it. So right. uh, I think that's a great thing is, but if you start with what you need it to do, you'll, you'll, it'll steer you towards what kind of tool you want to build. And then comes that task of, all right. So now when you choose, you got to customize, you got to figure out how custom you want to get. Mm -hmm. So, um, Alicia, how often should we be assessing, reassessing automation, you know, like integrations, all of our technology that in and of itself, I realize is a loaded yeah. question, but with the changes, cause I feel like even during our 30 minute mm -hmm. broadcast, something's happening, something's changing, yeah. right. That we're unaware of. What are you like, how often should we put our finger on the pulse when it comes to all of these moving pieces? Yeah. I mean, you nailed it that we can, you can find software tools that come out of the box and they can do a job for you right out of the gate, the Toyota Corollas, right? Like they're ready to go. They do the job. They're not going to be really custom, but you might look at them a year ago and it didn't do what you need it to do. And all of a sudden the new model comes out and it does everything you need it to do. And we've been finding this with QuickBooks advanced users they are rolling out all of these spreadsheet sync features that are just blowing our mind as accountants with what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and that didn't exist. It, it didn't, it didn't exist the way it's used now. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you have to kind of keep a pulse on it. And I, I think having a thought partner um, who is, is aware of those changes um, or having somebody on your staff who knows the technology and what's going is really helpful because it could change on a dime. And if that could change your automation task, um, yeah, it's nice to know sooner than later because you might go build out something really expensive and customized. And then you find out six months later that a software does it. And the, the truth is when you build a custom product, which we do that too, that's specific to your organization, um, it works great, but software developers are constantly looking for ways that they can solve problems. Right. So. Right. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think one of the things is that's so fascinating with this discussion is you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And so a lot of times I think it's so easy to just fall back on, okay, this is the way we've always done it. Yeah. And we have to work really hard and we have a lot to do and we're under pressure. And sometimes just opening your mind and going back to that flexible thinking and saying, okay, I'm going to invest mm -hmm. and change in this digital format um and ultimately it might be a little hard up front but ultimately it's going to yes. be a better investment how would you guide us to this because this is really an implementation almost like theory and practice mm -hmm. um for people that oftentimes don't like change dare uh, i say yeah not liking change it's you there has to be some level of openness to it because that beginning process you have to be enough of a technical mindset and interest that you can see the value of automation um and i find if you have staff that aren't on board with that and you aren't steering your organization that way yes you can keep limping along you can keep doing your tasks the way you do and you may not in the short run see the difference, probably the way people driving the horse and buggy down the streets <laughs> while the Model T Ford's going. <laughs> At some point, it will come to an inflection point. You can wait for that. Um, and I think it depends on your organization and what you're trying to accomplish. When you have a better sense of what technology can do, you're going to have a better sense of what you're missing out on and ways it could be helping you better. Um, and if you can't do that, find somebody who can find, find a consult, find, find a consultant or hire somebody in your staff to get up to speed on those things. Because, um, yeah, not everybody needs to be a, a tech expert on every tool, but when you do know, when you embrace that sort of a mindset, um, it opens it up. And I think when you get some things in place, when you find out what experts are using, it makes it feel a little more like an on-ramp to a freeway instead of, you know, <laughs> we're going 60 miles an hour right away. That's not a great model. So um, yeah, having people help you is a, I, I, it's whoever they are, having someone kind of guide you is a really helpful way because they're going to know what questions to ask. They're going to be thinking about 
what your needs are. They're going to kind of see the whole playing field for your nonprofit organization and ways you can automate it. And they may be able to say, yeah, that tool exists or no, we need to build that tool. Maybe we use something like Power Automate or something to do it for you. So, you know, I think, I, go ahead. I was going to say, I can't help but think, you know, 1.8 million nonprofits registered, only the registered ones mm -hmm. in the U.S., yeah. No one, I believe, starts a nonprofit that says, you know, I really want to start this nonprofit because I can't wait to automate or I can't wait to create these systems, you know, like, I feel like that's an afterthought, you know, and really looking at uh, even accounting, we talked about this with, you know, other YPTC colleagues this week is accounting for nonprofits is different, different. Perhaps automation for nonprofits has a little uniqueness as well. And yeah. so looking at this from, you know, again, no one starts a nonprofit with the excitement to get to that automation stage mm -hmm. because that's not their, probably not their passion, you know? And yeah. so looking at this, I just love YPTC as a dedicated nonprofit accounting, you know, company has so much knowledge when it comes to automation, comes to the NICRA, comes to oh. so many different opportunities. I'm just blown away, Julia, because, mm -hmm. you know, as we're having this conversation with Alicia, I'm really just seeing why PTC is almost the answer to everything. <laughs> that's kind of what wow. I'm <laughs> Wow. That's a heavy lift. But, you know, I think the thing of it is we have said, and you, you and I have said this Privately, we've said this on the nonprofit show, but that whole no money, no mission really oh, yeah. is is a central theme to how successful you can be, mm -hmm. no matter what your mission, vision, and values are. Mm -hmm. And so right. if you can get this component um, in place, um, the automation, AI, understanding how you can be more efficient, mm -hmm. um, I think it's really that magical key that unlocks potential. I mean, just to hear Alicia that Bloomerang has an interface with QuickBooks yeah. is stunning because Bloomerang is a, a really forward thinking company um, in the digital space. And so it's fascinating. And I think if you could look for those types of alignments as mm -hmm. you're going on this journey, that in itself is gonna paint a picture, I would think would be a big help yeah. because it's such a new way mm -hmm. for us, especially in the nonprofit sector, to be thinking about. I mean, when we started the nonprofit show, people didn't have Zoom accounts. Yeah. They were freaked out about Zoom. I mean, really, right, Jarrett? Oh, yeah. And now, you know, board meetings are pretty much predominantly Zoom or a hybrid of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The technology yeah. advancements in our sector has been exponential since 2020. You know, I've seen it at conferences. I've really seen this mm -hmm. tech forward, but really like just a huge advancement when it comes to technology in our sector. Yeah. And you know, it's so tied to people. It affects people. It affects our mission. And I, I keep thinking when, when you keep it connected to people, it'll help you make better decisions. Like if the technology can help you serve your constituents better, it's, it's always helpful. And I, I think we jump into technology. Like if you're not a technology person, I see, I see people jump in, their organization starts growing. They realize there's data everywhere. And yeah. now we need to think through, oh, I could be doing something with this. I need to be tracking my donors. I need to be tracking my account. I need to track my grant of success. And I need to have metrics for things, all of that. And you just naturally see, I could do this manually and I'll probably have errors. My, the quality of my work, I'm seeing it. I'm right. one of my, one of my um, forecast sheets. I just looked at it yesterday, had 900 formulas on it. 900. Oof. This is a very basic monthly <laughs> forecast, 900 formulas. So much can go wrong and you spend all your time checking it. Right. right. So you see the time that we spend doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and you could see automation could change that. And yeah, we're seeing it, YPTC. We're, we're as much focused on tech as uh, accounting. It just flows right together because it, it touches so much of what we do in the nonprofit world. And it intersects a lot with our finances. So yes. um, and our storytelling, how we visualize this data um, that's coming at lightning speed. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite departments is the data viz team. The I just... 
truly I'm, I'm just I'm like, on that group. Yeah. I really do mesmerized I, by because finance accounting is not my jam. Like it that yeah. will blaze my eyes over quicker than anything. Um and so really having I'm very visual. So seeing the visual element, you know, like the the data viz team can help to provide it tells the story and it tells yeah, the story yes. in particular to me that the numbers, wow. like just the numbers, mm -hmm. I, I don't read numbers very well. <laughs> well, put it into context. No, and I, I think it's- I need to see it simply, yeah. Yeah, and I think that, you know, to go back to your point, the 900 formulas, mm -hmm. you know, which one of those is the most important mm -hmm. and how are we going to use that to make our decisions that impact- yeah so many people and impact yes. the trajectory of our service um, to our communities, to our teams, to our clients. It's really a daunting thing. Mm -hmm. So this has been a fabulous conversation, Alicia. I think that you've taken a lot of fear out of it. You've given us a lot of really tangible um, paths that we can take when looking at this, um, you know, the intersection of AI and how we really need to be automating the the processes that we are required by law to do uh, in many cases that we have to do in order to run our businesses and so this has really been fun um check out alicia associate at your part-time controller you can go to yptc.com um alicia on the website there's a fabulous story about you and your family and work in Africa. Yeah. It's really an amazing story. And if you have the opportunity to uh, find out more about some of the, the members at YPTC, make sure you stop and, and want, read that piece. There's some Thank you. really cool images and it's um, it humanizes your work and your commitment to our sector. And so yeah. check that out. Um, Alicia Eastwald, you've been a, a wonder to have on. Again, we mentioned YPTC.com. They are uploading all of these um, episodes. You know, you can find them on our portals as well, but you can also find them on YPTC.com. This is all free. You don't have to be one of their clients. And there's just tons and tons of information. They produced um, many of their own, uh, much of their own content. And so you can learn even more about what they do and what they think and, and how they are approaching this new dawn uh, with nonprofit financial management. Jared, this has been a really super cool week because we have all these different voices talking about different things and yet they all relate to get together. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. And they're all been. women. Look at this phenomenal yeah. female <laughs> fierce team. I've just really enjoyed it. Yesterday with Susan was a wonderful conversation as we yeah. dove deep into foundations. And so as we wrap up this week, you know, Alicia, wonderful conversation about automation. Tomorrow is going to be our dedicated ask and answer each and every week we do that. And so nonprofit power weeks, they're unique. They're special because we don't do them often. We save, you know, just a select few weeks throughout the year to provide this deep dive. It's essentially our shark week, if you will, but it's so much fun. And uh, again, just thrilled to have YPTC with us this week, each and every day. And yes, the YPTC.com, it already has this week's uh, conversations with these leaders that you see here on the screen uploaded. So fantastic week. I'm kind of sad for tomorrow to be Friday and wrapping up the week. It's gone by fast. Hey, I want to give a quick a shout out to Gerilyn Dressler, who's, whose picture is not on here, but she's the person that I work with in order, in order to put these um, episodes together. We have spent a lot of time together talking about what we think are good topics, um, what we think everybody is is chomping at the bit to discuss or to learn about. And she has the pulse on the finger of all of the YPTC family across the nation. And so I would be remiss if I didn't um, you know, thank her, as well as thanking our sponsors. And they include Fundraising Academy at National University, Bloomerang, Your Part-Time Controller, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and non Profit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. Hey, Jarrett, do you want to sign this off, sister? 
Absolutely. It's been wonderful. Again, thanks for all of you that have joined us. If you are a repeat listener and joiner, we're so glad that you keep coming back. This is your first time with us. We are so glad that you're here and we hope to see you back here again. We sign off every episode with this mantra and it hasn't changed for nearly 900 episodes, but we want to remind all of you to please stay well so you can do well. 